All right, what's up, everybody? It's good to be here with you today. Today is a little bit unique. In fact, you're going to hear two introductions right now. So first off, I want to welcome you to the Contractor Fight podcast. I'm Tom Reber, and I'm hanging out with my buddy, Brian Cascavelsian. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right, now it's your turn. Go. Hey, everybody. This is Brian Cascavalsian from the Wealthy Contractor <laughs> Podcast, and I'm here with my good buddy, Tom Reber from the Contractor Fight. There you go. There this you go. is crazy. Podcast. What's that? There, that's a unique podcast intro. It intro. is. I don't think anyone's ever done that before, at least not on either one of our shows. shows. Yeah. So guys, Brian and I, we were like, hey, let's get together. Let's be back on each other's shows. And well, shit, we've been on the phone for almost an hour right now around this meeting, talking without hitting record, just catching up. And we were like, you know what, let's just record one episode. We'll just push it out to both of our, our audiences because we're right. going to have the same damn conversation anyway. So, That's right. um, so we just figured we'd do that. So, so welcome. So Brian, uh, you're down in Florida. I'm in Colorado. Um, you got, uh, you got G4 marketing group going on down there, helping a lot of contractors up. So for anybody who's not heard you on my show before, um, this is going to be weird, man, because we're like going to go. I know we're going to go back. It's totally forth, weird. Right? Um, we'll for anyone quick, that, quick. For, yeah, for anyone that hasn't heard you before on one of the previous episodes of the contractor fight, give us a thirty thousand foot view of what do you do, who you help. Well, so look, the main thing is we do relationship marketing for contractors. What that means is. <laughs> We help contractors after jobs are completed say thank you, get reviews, get referrals, and get repeat business. That is what we do. So now in return to all of the wealthy contractor podcast listeners, Tom, tell us what you do over at the contractor fight. Well, there you go, man. Um, so... Our whole mission here is to bring respect and dignity back to the trades. Um, and we do that through our podcast, our YouTube channel, Contractor Fight TV, all the social media. Uh, we have a ton of, we have a really cool free Facebook group. We've got paid programs that help everybody from a startup to a $20 million um, you know, contractor who's looking to be more profitable. We do leadership coaching. Uh, everything's focused around making more profit, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yep. Great sales training academy for contractors who uh, don't necessarily have big sales teams. Uh, and time is really of the essence. So we teach you how to use your telephone. We've been doing the virtual sales thing for about six years, and it's now the sexy flavor of the month. That's right. Uh, and really everything we were talking about in the hour that we didn't record, um, we, we just believe in getting after you guys a little bit as contractors, getting in your faces a little bit, calling you on your BS, and um, I look at that as a pattern interrupt in a world of all these, you know, professional button up shirt wearing consultants, right? You're not wearing a button up shirt right now, are you? Okay, good. No, um, both, you and I are both wearing black t-shirts. Black t-shirts, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, you know, everyone's, it, it's just everything starts to sound the same, right? Right. And, wah, 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 and, and that's where we, in the fight, we just come out of the gate. We yell and scream at people and kick them in the ass. And lo and behold, they make more money and have better lives. So nice. So speaking of, yeah, um, pattern interrupts and not sounding the same. Um, what's some low hanging fruit you could give a contractor right now to kick up the relationship marketing aspect of his business and not blend in with all the other contractors that are out there? Well, look, right now we need all of us. We need our customers more than ever. So I've been talking for years while things have been good, like better than we've ever seen ever. Um, my, at every speaking event, my thing is, hey, look, things are great right now. Do everything you can to make sure you're staying sticky with your customers because when things change, not if, when they change, and by the way, this was never doom and gloom talk. This was always opportunity talk. Uh -huh. When things change, you're going to need your customers to help get you through it, mm -hmm. to help you make money, and to help you come out successful on the other side. Well, guess what? We're in the middle of it right now. And um, my clients that are sticking with, that have done a good job of staying sticky with their customers are going to pull through this. They're doing good. They're 
they're closing jobs, they're selling jobs, they're installing jobs, and they're getting referrals. And um, so that, that to me, that's been my big message for years. And now it's like, so we got to reach out to our customers, let them know we're open for business. That's a lot of what we're doing with our mm-hmm. clients too, is just making sure that their customers know that they're open for business. Um, we're, we're helping them make offers during this time. We're helping them get, create value. So how are you as a contractor valuable to your customers? Well, provide them with tips, provide them with how to maintain their homes while they're home, help them with projects that they have and on and on. But we need our customers now more than ever. Yeah. That tips thing's big because I, I was on the, uh, on one of our group coaching calls and I had a painter on there and he's like, Tom, you're always telling us to create content for social media and be relevant and all this other stuff. Um, I don't know what to do now. I'm trapped at home. I'm not on a job site. And I said, well, let's project, Let's, let's imagine for a minute, put yourself in the shoes of your customers. They're at home too. Right. They're stuck at home. Uh, they're ready to choke the kids or whatever. Okay. And I said, how about pulling out your camera, your phone, and just go, hey, if you're like me, you're trapped in the house. You're noticing things that need to be done around here. And so I want to give you guys a quick tip on how to take some of that leftover paint that you have and do a few touch-ups around the house to kill some time and just walk them through how to do it. So it is about being relevant to the situation that your customers are in. That's right. So there's, there's always something that we can do to serve them. That that adds value because you could even kick the video off going, Hey, listen, as much as I would love for you to call us up and have us come out and do these touch-ups for you, we're all trapped right now. We can't. So you got some time on your hands. You got a paintbrush. You got some touch-up paint. Let me show you how to touch your walls up without them making look terrible. Yeah. Here it is. Here's some tips. Um, Great. And that, add val- that adds value. This is um, what I'm seeing from guys, man, is those who were committed to building their brands are doing okay right now mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah, they're, they're down a little, whatever. Um, but those who, I mean, if you couldn't make money in the previous several years, you're kind of hosed right now. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. That's, that, well, that's a tough conversation to have right now. Mm-hmm. It's kicking people while they're down, but look, it's profit model is very important. We talk about profit model on the wealthy Mm -hmm. contract podcast all the time. Having the right profit model is important. And I, I don't know about you, but I think um, as we are coming out of this, that we're like, we're going to do over the next 30, 60, 90 days. I think most, most companies are probably going to have to start raising their prices if they weren't already, you know, in the process of raising price through the worst thing you can do through something like this. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, worst thing you can do that you and I talked about is stop advertising. Right. Second worst thing you could do is lower your prices. If anything, Mm -hmm. you need to be raising your prices, but figure out how am I going to become more valuable to my customer? Right. To protect that margin more than, more than ever. Yeah. So, you're leading me down a couple paths here, which is kind of cool. So you talk about raising prices. This makes me think, let's, let's say you have um, 60 days, right? Where you couldn't produce work. Yeah. Well, the profit to hit your break even points is now, now you got 60 less working days in the year to do that. So you actually just mathematically forget emotionally or what you think right. you have to raise your prices to recover your overhead with less days. That's right. So, um, so that that's first thing. The second thing, um, is I, if, if I had a crystal ball, which I don't, but if I did, I'm predicting that those companies that have a good mindset right now, they're stepping on the gas with their marketing. They're connecting with their customers. Um, they're going to raise their prices because the math is telling me those guys are going to have a freaking monstrous fall. Yeah. I mean, it is going to be I a agree. monstrous third and fourth quarter. Yeah, like, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Second quarter year is going to be tough, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that you're out. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you are setting yourself up for third quarter and then ultimately for mm-hmm. a, a big fourth quarter. How are you, you know, you and I are both share a lot of the same views, uh, especially around the idea of, of profitability, working less, um, and the importance of mindset. Yeah. 
So what are some things that I know for, for my listeners that, that aren't familiar with Tom, so he's sitting here now and he's got a Marines shirt on. He's got a black t-shirt, but it says Marines. Um, he's tough. <laughs> he comes from a military background. Um, I do not. Um, so what are you telling your uh, clients right now or how are you helping them with their mindset? Mm-hmm. Because you know as well as I do, if we start to lose in our heads, we're going to lose out in the world. Yeah. And keeping our head in the game right now, keeping our shit together right now in our heads is, is I think to me is probably the most important thing that we can do as business owners right now. Yeah. So how are you advising your clients around the idea of mindset? Yeah. Well, well, first I want to thank you for noticing the Marine Corps t-shirt. I am a Marine, uh, but I'm, I'm actually, uh, more proud that I get to say right now, my, my oldest son is in Marine Corps boot camp in week four right now. No way. We record this. So he's in oh San Diego. God, that's awesome. Um, he's hating life. Um, actually, I think he's liking it. I think he's yeah. like, he's in his element. You know, he, he's, uh, he gets to yell and scream and, you know, shoot things and whatever. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so the mindset thing is huge and it, it's funny. Um, 80% of every bit of our coaching content in the contractor fight, every program, no matter what program it is, free stuff, our podcast, our YouTube channel, um, it is all 80% mindset. We talk about mindset all the time. Um, you know, there's all the cliches about, you know, what you think you become and all this other crap, right? And the reticular activating system in your brain, what you give attention to always improves. And um, But what we're having conversations with right now, especially with what's going on is um you you have um you have, we we all have control over two things one is what we put in our minds and the actions we take that's the second thing yep. and so that's really been the consistent message and to to really be intentional about what we put in our minds um in fact i have mine right here it's under the i just brought it down it's right here dude i created a fight planner it's a big um thick 90 day planner Okay. That is designed. Oh, that's um, cool. That it's designed to like work intentionally on these two areas. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be the planner and you can, I could give you a link. People could download the daily sheets for free. Okay. Or if they don't want to go buy a planner, I'm not trying to pitch the planner, but I'm just saying, I'm like, we have control over two things. And so the left side of this thing, it starts with three things I'm grateful for. Okay. Like if you don't have gratitude coming right out of the gate each day, um, it, you're going to have a hard, harder time. The second section of, of that mindset piece is that we call the three I am's. They're affirmations. They're, you know, like I, I write things like, um, you know, this morning I wrote, um, and I pretty much write the same things every day, but I, I am lean and healthy. I'm working to become lean and healthy because I want to drill that in my brain. Uh, one of the things I've written for years is I am a magnet for money and success. Okay. And the more you tell yourself these things, the more you believe them. If you're sitting around, if you're not taking intentional time every day to work on things you're grateful for and the, and who you want to become, then you're just going to kind of pick up on the shit that comes. So and true. That's what you're going to get. Um, right. You know, all the brain experts will tell you there's um, we have what 70 to 90,000 thoughts a day. And most of them are negative And most of them are the same thoughts you had yesterday. That's right. So, um, so I'm sitting here going and mo and they're all subconscious, right? And most of them. So I encourage people, man, take control of that mindset piece um, visualization. And I don't want to freak people out here. I am not a woo-woo guy, but I have a mindset coach. I call him Yoda. His name's Chris Dwyer. The guy's awesome. He's been in my corner for years. He's taught me to just visualize 17 seconds at a time. Take 17 seconds, close your eyes, picture yourself in that, that state. You know, one of my goals is I want to speak to a stadium full, like 30, 40,000 contractors someday. Okay. Um, you know, you had Grant Cardone down there in Florida recently. Last year, had his big thing. He filled yeah. the stadium. And I'm like, well, why can't we fill the stadium with contractors? Cool. And so, you know what I picture? I don't picture myself on the stage in front of the contracts. I picture myself 17 seconds at a time, a couple times a day, where I'm behind the stage and I'm looking down as my feet are going up four risers onto the stage. And I can hear the crowd and the 17 seconds is over. That's what I do a few times a day. Nice. And Brian, guess what? It's going to happen. 
It's going to win. What's going to happen? Because my mind already believes it. So that's first thing is just that. And then the second thing is um, have massive clarity around what you want on the action side of things. And, um, and so, and it's just, I pick three things a day. So let's just say, um, well, currently my, um, <laughs> my quarterly goal, which is in here on the right side is um, 217 speeches this quarter, this quarter. And I, I got this from Russell Brunson at ClickFunnels. Um, they define, I'm defining a speech as anytime there's two or more people that are around to hear me run my mouth. Okay. And I know that that action alone in my business always drives to growth of the company, profitability, serving more people, bringing respect back to the trades, all those things combined, the more I run my mouth. And so I, then I, I do three act actions that day that are going to lead me to doing a speech or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And so it might be send an email to Brian and talk about us doing a podcast again together. Right. That's, that right. could be one of those actions. It could be shooting an Instagram TV video and doing a thing or whatever. So for me, it just comes down to this. And I know this is a long winded answer. <laughs> I'm encouraging people just don't be a victim. Just don't sit around and wait for shit to happen to you. Go make the stuff happen that you want to happen in your life. And that's going to help pass the time number one um but you know i just think it, it's it's all all in all it's just healthier for us to understand that we are truly in control right okay? we are in control and it all starts with what we put in our head I, yeah and and this is something that that we've been talking about a lot here especially lately and you're you're right you you cannot control what's going on out there we can't control the the the, the virus we can't right. control the government we can't control any of that stuff but what we can control is the thoughts we think the beliefs we hold true and the actions that we take and it's interesting too that you said about um you know the last time you and i did this we talked about the seven secrets book yeah. uh my book the seven secrets to becoming wealthy contractor and you brought up you just brought up clarity and how important clarity is. Well, what's secret number one? Secret number one is get clear on what it is that you want. Right. And focus on that. Yeah. Right. So instead of thinking about what you don't want, focus on what mm -hmm. you do want. Then take responsibility for that. That's secret number two. And then make a commitment. This is going to happen. And so what has to happen in order for me to move forward on this? And it just goes along with, with I think, just perfectly with what, what you said. Got to keep your head in the game on this. Yeah, and, and I, I want to spell out this clarity piece for people. I know you work with a lot of people to do exterior stuff and roofers and siding and, you know, projects like that, right? Well, listen, clarity doesn't mean I want to be, I want to get more exterior jobs. That's right. too vague. Clarity is... I want to do more siding jobs in ABC subdivision in such and such zip code. Yeah. Okay. Cause whatever we focus on, we get more of it's that simple. Well, and also it's here is how much money mm -hmm. I want to make at the end of the year. I want to make whatever the number is, hundred thousand, 200,000, a million, yep. pick a number, but pick a number that's going to give you the life that you want and then reverse engineer your business. Just like you said, get very yeah. clear about this is the, the zip code. This is the type of customer that I work with. And this is how many of those customers I need in order to hit my goal. Bingo. That's it. That's how, you know, you probably get this a lot. I get this a lot in my community. Tom, I don't know what to do to market my business. I don't know what it means to have a marketing strategy. I don't, you know, whatever. And it starts with that. What, what do you want? Yeah. Do you only want, I, one of my calls today before this, I was on the phone with a guy and, um, and the topic came up and I said, well, how many days a year do you want to work? And then I said, actually, let me rephrase that. I said, how many days a year do you want to not work? And that we, I, Dan Sullivan is ass, right? If yeah. those, you know, Dan Sullivan. No, and, and just if I could throw this in, nobody's ever asked him that question before. Right. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. And so Dan Sullivan, who's a brilliant coach has free days, buffer days, and focus days. And he encourages people, you take that 12-month 
calendar of all the days. And the first thing you do every year is you X out the days that you ain't going to work. Okay. And whatever. So it starts with that clarity. So anyone who doesn't know what to do for their marketing, it, it, everything's tactics and strategies and math. Okay. It, but none of that shit matters or it's going to be that effective if you don't truly know what you want. Yeah. And um, I had a guy reach out and goes, I want to grow my business to 5 million bucks. And I go, well, why? You know, and uh, long story short, 10 minutes later, he finally gets it. Well, I want to be able to pay myself 250 grand a year. And I'm like, so it's not possible to make 250 if you don't do 5 million? Help me out here. You know, and, you know how many times I've had that same conversation? Yeah. Too many people are stuck thinking, oh, I need to have a $5 million business or I need a $3 million, whatever the number, again, the number itself doesn't matter. What matters is how are you getting to these numbers? Yeah. What is it that you really want? And you're right. I mean, and it's usually they're looking at, they're looking at their industry dollars. averages. They're right. looking at their peers and they're thinking they, that you have to play by those same rules and percentages and you don't, right. you know, I know one guy's got a million and a half dollar business and owner's salary is 600,000. Yeah. Okay. Cause he's Nothing very clear that. on what he wants. Right. So I, I, have, I have a question for you here. Two things. Um, cause I get asked this a lot and to be, perfectly honest i haven't put the time in coming up with a good answer or a system or process but i'm gathering you have this Maybe. number one is tom how do i get more reviews okay okay and number two tom how do i get more referrals okay so they both start this i can i can answer that question okay. so they both start at the exact same place and that is the customer experience how is the customer experience? Are you, I always say a satisfied customer is a liability. And I won't go in the, the, the complete depth, but basically it's what kind of system do you have? Do you have a system designed to create satisfied customers or do you have a system create, to create raving fans? Okay. Who is more likely to leave a review? A raving fan or a satisfied customer? Raving fan. Who's more likely to make referrals, a raving fan or a satisfied customer? Raving right? fan. Yeah. And the reality of it is I, there's only two people that leave reviews and only one person that makes referrals. So the two people that leave reviews are raving fans, people that are really, really, really happy and thrilled with what you did, and the people that are really pissed off. Yeah. Everybody in between, those people are really hard to get reviews from because, I mean, what do you really do? Is if you're just doing what you said you would do, so what? You haven't really earned, you know, the right to anything more. But when you go above and beyond and you create a real fan, well, they're going to go out and now they're going to brag about you. They're going to want. They're going to be a, a champion for your success. Yeah, and so. So that's the first part of it with both reviews and referrals. And then with reviews, you have to have a way of making it easy for them. So like in our, for, for us, we do it for our clients, but we email the customer and ask them. We text the customer and ask them. We use direct mail and ask them. And we teach our clients how to do it face to face. I mean, I can show somebody within 90 seconds how to get a five-star review using the phone. Well, referrals are kind of the same. The problem mo most people have is they don't ask for referrals. They don't make it easy to give referrals and they don't reward referrals the right way. Mm -hmm. And so with referrals, what you've got to do is you've got to obviously earn the right. You've got to ask for them. You have to make it an event that's more than just a day. I always say that that people will talk about referrals after the job is done. They might even have a brochure for a program that they have. Right. And they give the customer the, oh, here's our referral program. If you know anybody, you know, uh, send them to us. Well, what happens to that? It yeah. goes into the job folder. Where does the job folder go? Yeah. It either yeah. goes into the round file or a square file. Right. In either place, they're never seen again. And so what, we believe with referrals is you got to keep reminding people of who you are, the service you provide, how to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. that you are referable and that you appreciate and reward referrals. 
So I always say too, when somebody makes a referral, you got to make a big deal out of it. You have to say, thank you. Send them, send them something, send them a gift. They're not always, they're not doing it for the money, but send them 25 bucks, send them a gift card to something, send them a gift, call them, say, thank you, make a big deal out of it. Because if somebody makes a referral, they're more likely to make more. So that hopefully answers your question. I I love that. And I, I, um, I did the math for a guy the other day um, where I diagrammed it out on my screen with a, you know, pen or whatever. And I'm like, here's Bob and Bob, say your average job size, 25 grand, right? Bob spent 25 grand with you. And this is about understanding lifetime value. Lifetime value is not just Bob. (laughs) Okay. Bob might spend, 25 grand this year and over the next just call it five years he might drop another 15 to 20 grand on miscellaneous little things for you to do around the house because you had a good experience so it might be that 25 might really be 40 or 50 grand in five years but now you enter in the referral okay and then now you got a new bob right and then then that referral i mean i would love i'll tell you what you want to blow people's mind i think back to my all the thousands of painting projects that my company did back in the day. And I know you've, if you think about your history, how cool would it be if you could really see like it started with this job and it just like a crazy root system over the years. So lifetime value isn't the 25 grand. The, The example I gave with this other guy, I'm like, if Bob just tells in five years gives you gives your company like three more referrals or something to other people and those people hire you that 25 grand was really like 200 grand yeah or whatever the math was in the example but i was trying to make the case for why it's so important to deliver an amazing experience and don't be a cheap ass when it comes to saying thank you and all that stuff so here's here so here's what most contractors will say to that right and and this is the and this is the fatal flaw in the thinking what most contractors are going to say, well, when, when he spends $25,000, he's not going to have any, any more money or he's not going to need me for anything else. Or maybe even worse is, well, he knows who I am. And if he needs me, he'll call me. It's like, oh my God, no, that's not how it works. Yep. You know, most company, most businesses, forget even contractors, most businesses don't think about the customer in terms of long-term customer value. No. You and I learned that from, well, I learned it from Dan Kennedy. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you learned it from wherever you learned it from. But there is, if you understand what your customer's potential lifetime value is, you will look at every single customer in a very different way. Yep. And I, most businesses don't think that way at all. Look at these restaurants. Restaurants blow my mind. Now they're all closed down now. And a lot of them are going to close. Why? Because of all of the hundreds of people that came through their doors, thousands of people that came through their doors, did they once ask for an email address? Did they ask for a phone number? Did they ask for a physical address? Did they do anything to get them onto a physical mailing list so that they could stay in touch with them? I I know a guy, I I, I just read a guy, I know of the guy, but his restaurant's killing it right now. Why? Because he's a hell of a marketer. He has a database of customers. He's not relying on Grubhub and all of these places where all of his competition is listed. He's going after people one, you know, you know, thousands at a time, but he's going after them as being the only option. Yeah. That guy's going to thrive. That guy's going to make money. Even when the, when the economy is bad, that guy is going to make money. Yeah, we, um, you know, it's never been easier to get eyeballs too. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of funny what you're saying, what I'm saying. I always gravitate towards like the social media side. Yeah. And it's just because I've had success with it. I buy into it and I like it. Right. So yeah. I'm sitting here going, as you're talking, I'm like, all right, if I owned a restaurant, say I owned a pizza joint. Okay. Or whatever restaurant, you know what I would be doing? I'd be doing a daily, Hey, it's kitchen time with Tom. That's right. And you're trapped at home. Let's pretend these are the only ingredients that you have. Let's whip something up. And I do a Facebook live and do that. Like I would, I would do what I would have fun with it. And, yeah. and I guarantee you, there's a, there's a pizza company. Um, so one of my good friends and clients, they're a water feature company. 
they're having pizza. This is before the Corona thing, having pizza at this joint. And this, the owner says, yeah, business was down a little. And he says, well, why don't you start doing a Facebook live? Cause he's, he's done like hundreds of thousands of dollars just from doing Facebook lives. And I did a podcast with him on my channel. You guys can hear it. Alan Decker. He recommends to the pizza people to do this. And apparently she pulls the trigger and does it a couple of times. And she says her, I think it was like their slowest revenue days now have come on par with their like almost best revenue days, just because they're using a damn device that we all have in our pocket here. So it, it blows well, and, my mind. Yeah. And they're not just sitting back mm -hmm. waiting for stuff to happen. You got to be proactive. Marketing is about getting out there. Marketing is about what is that? What is the thing we were we were talking about before? And you and I both had the same reaction that some consultant you know. Oh, told, oh yeah. Told, there's there's a, tell, her, tell that story. Tell yeah. me and tell everybody what you told him. I'm so gonna there, mark. There's, the, yeah, there's this there's this uh, there's this consultant who works with the construction industry, and I know somebody who's part of the program over there and um and they said yeah he's telling us to not market right now to cut our advertising and your reaction was my advertising is he's a fucking idiot yeah okay that is the worst thing that you could do and then you and i talked this is off air before we hit record like we both agreed like okay if you're spending something that's what i call ineffective overhead then cut it okay like if i'm running a golf course you know, somebody, somebody the other day asked, and I'm not making fun of this. I'm just laughing because the, I'm remembering this. One of the guys in my group, um, he posted in our app. He was like, Hey, you know, should I run an ad on, um, golf scorecards or something like that was his thing, you know? Yeah. And like, if you're doing that, if you're doing something, you're not getting the results, you're not getting the phone to ring, then, okay, certainly cut it or cut it back. Right. right. Uh, but the things that, are proven to work. So for you, like a referral program or client experience or gifting or Facebook ads or whatever you're doing, um, if, if you have trucks on the road and then majority of your leads come from trucks, hmm, buy another fucking truck, right? right. So it's like, that's, that's kind of what we agreed on, but there's so much bad advice right now. And one of those things is cut back in your marketing. Worst Cause, thing. Because here's, right. here's the thing, and, and uh, you and I are looking at each other, we see this. This is the yeah. analogy I'm using here. My right hand and my left hand are in front of me. They're, they're, they're parallel, right? My right hand is, is my competitors. They're shrinking back. They're going down, okay? They're pulling back. They're hiding in the closet. They're being a victim, whatever it is. They're waiting for a, for a bailout. You name it, right? Well, just by them shrinking back, you're gaining ground on them without you doing shit. Not doing anything. Um, now imagine if you start push, putting on the gas and you start kicking up your marketing, your social media and your visibility and all these other things. Now the gap, when this thing is done, 30, 60, 90, 120 days, two years, I don't care. Whenever this is done, if you keep that going, they're non-existent, they're irrelevant, you're in a league all your own. Yeah. Dumbest advice, uh, single dumbest advice ever. And that dude should be, should be uh, a yeah. dude for malpractice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anyway, so right. yeah, so it's you gotta be you gotta in, in all times you have to be proactive. You gotta yeah. you can't you can't just wait around for stuff to happen. It doesn't work that way. You know, life. If you want something, you have to go to it. You have to go and get it. Absolutely. Anyway, you know this. So, Brian, as we wrap this up, what? Uh, how can people find you if they want to reach out, get in touch, learn more about you? Well, for, for, uh, well, I'll, I'll do two things. One is if uh, anybody's interested in relationship marketing services, uh, just go to G F O U R marketing.com G four marketing.com. And um, for anybody that's interested in the seven secrets book, mm -hmm. um, you can go to the wealthy and um, I bought a whole bunch of copies and um, people, it's a pretty popular book. You can go there, get it for free. We're still shipping them out for free. Uh, I just asked people to pay shipping and handling on that. Well, there you go. And for the wealthy contract, so for the wealthy contractor listeners, if you are in the remodeling business, if you're in the painting business, if you're in the landscaping business, uh, Tom is a guy that you need to know. 
Uh, Tom, how do they find you? Uh, just simply go to the contractor fight anywhere on Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, just put in the contractor fight, uh, podcasts, whatever. Um, and yeah, we got a great team of people here. Got a great community. We got a, uh, a Facebook group that has, it's free. There's a ton of value in the Facebook groups. So you go to Facebook. That's a way that you can just connect with other people that are like-minded and trying to own their crap and not be victims. And uh, like I said to you before, I mean, we have, we have so much stuff um, in our free communities and things like that, um, that I'm super proud of that we just make available for people because um, at the end of the day, it's about bringing respect and dignity back to people and everybody's in a different spot in their life, their business. And uh yeah, the contractor fight, man. Just love it. Hit us up, brother. Love it. Well, I can't wait to um, get things back to normal here. Me neither, man. You know? And um, I know there's a couple events. There's the International Builder Show that's coming, I think, to Florida next year. Yeah. 2021. And then uh, the Paint Painting Contractor Association is going to be down in, uh, I think, Orlando again next year. Okay. Um, early 2021 um and i'm working on uh i'll probably I'll most likely be at both of those unless something crazy happens um and that'd be cool while i'm down in florida if i can't get down there sooner maybe grab a beer man absolutely so, man i'll be i'll so. be uh, i'll be ready and waiting man first thing i already made dinner reservations by the way for may 1st and may 2nd <laughs> where and are you going where are you going just here I know, but where? Like, give them a plug. Oh, oh, we're, we're, uh, the <laughs> first reservation is at Perry's Steakhouse. All right. I'm dying for a good steak. Yeah, I can't wait for my girlfriend and I to be able to go back to our oyster bar. There's an oyster bar here. Yeah. At Jack's. And, uh, we would do happy hour there once a week and get a bunch of oysters and, yeah. Have and a then time. So, Perry's, when I get home, I'm planning the, my next vacation. There you go. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. Yeah, you and me both, man. I, I, I'm in Colorado, and I got to go somewhere where it's just warm. I want to go warm. warm. Yeah. We don't have spring here. It, like, goes from winter, and then we have, like, summer for a couple days in March and early April, and then we have our second winter, and yeah. it dumps on us cold and rain and snow, and then, like, middle of – early middle may we kind of hit into the summer season well i just i so. just read that uh, our governor is opening up the beaches it sounds like today which is awesome i heard uh, i was talking to a friend of mine crap. who's in jersey crap i heard they're closing the jersey shore down the whole summer is what oh uh, really a friend of mine told me so good for you you got your beaches open there man yeah. we gotta get All back right. to normal thank you tom absolutely you rock we got to roll. Thanks everybody for listening. And we will, uh, here, I'll just do my clothes right now. And then you could do your clothes for your show. How's that? Okay. All right. Here we go. So we're not editing any of this. We're just going with the flow here. Two guys shooting the shit. So, Hey guys, appreciate you listening to the contractor fight, uh, with the talk with me and Brian here today, hey, head over to his stuff, check our show notes for links to all the stuff that he talked about. And, uh, Travis rock us out, bring in the guitars. We'll see you guys next time. Cool. Now it's on to you. Well, everybody, this is another episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. This is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group. And until next time. <laughs>